It's story time. Chapter 3 My Gothic Soulmate by Marie Conway In 2011, I decided to leave college after my first year and go to cosmetology school. My family was absolutely pissed. Shortly after I started, I had a horrible breakup and was heartbroken to the point of grief. I met another girl in beauty school named Katie, who had just broken up with her fiancé and was hurting from it big time. We were both heartbroken, and we were both goth-looking, so we were drawn to each other and became fast friends. Actually, we jokingly decided we were gothic soulmates, so we called each other our GSM, for short. My gothic soulmate and I were constantly drinking, getting high, and getting into trouble. We had a lot of fun, but it started to get problematic. One time, we got into three minor car accidents in one night because she was driving drunk. She almost failed out of beauty school because she would stay out all night partying and sleep past 5 p.m., missing the entire day. My own life kind of started to go into the gutter as well. I had to quit my job at the hair salon where we were both working. I moved back to my mom's house in the suburbs because my mental health was deteriorating. I didn't see much of Katie during this time, and we eventually lost touch. This was partly because I moved, but I also kind of stopped reaching out because she was on a whole other level of wildness and partying than me. I was trying to clean up my life and go back to college, and she seemed to be spiraling into worse and worse alcoholism. I was scared for her and didn't know how to handle it, so I stopped reaching out. But I continued to love her with all my heart from a distance, and would sometimes hear her voice in my head cracking jokes and saying her own phrases and made-up words. Last summer, she had been on my mind because I was coming up on one year without drinking alcohol. I had been thinking about our party days and how we would just drink with reckless abandon. My life was very different at this point. I had finally finished college, too. Then one night in early July, I had a dream that ended up being quite a gut punch. In the dream, Katie had died. I was in a dark room near a clothing rack with lots of black clothing hanging on it. It was all her taste of clothing, black, fishnet, dominatrix-looking stuff. I was standing there with her possessions that she had left behind, overwhelmed with grief and missing her. I woke up confused, unsettled, and surprised I'd remembered a dream for once. Later that day, after work, I decided to Google stalk her to see what she was up to. When I typed in her name, her obituary came up. I screamed at my computer. I was wiped out for days. I was shocked by how weak the loss made me. I could barely reach for a glass of water without getting tired. I've never felt that quality of exhaustion before. But then, I don't know how to explain it, but I felt her presence with me for several days after that. It was like she was right by me. I've never had such a close and sure feeling of someone being present with me who wasn't really there. Nothing like this has ever happened to me before. I have heard of people feeling the presence of a loved one who passed, but never really thought about it too much. For example, I had a coworker some years ago who, not long after her father died, felt his presence while alone one day and smelled the cigars he used to smoke, when she was absolutely certain there was no one around smoking a cigar. Her sharing this with me made me believe that it's a real phenomenon. When Katie was present with me, it was more of an affirmative signal I would receive. It would come on like a light switch. It was like an undeniable fact when she was there. It's kind of like when you're talking to someone and they give you an affirmative nonverbal cue like nodding or smiling. I would just feel her soul like she was there with me, laughing or egging me on. 
the time I started crying randomly on my break at work, it felt like my heart was overflowing with love from her. It really felt like she was proud of me without using any words to tell me. It's hard to describe. I've never tried to put words to it before, but my best attempt is to say it feels like her soul is being projected onto mine. When I get her messages, it's loud and clear. I think she sent me the dream message because she wanted me to know. She passed last March, and I didn't know about it until July because I'm not on social media. I also think she waited until July because I was going through an extremely stressful time in my last semester of college in May and then scrambling to find a job in June. And she waited till things had settled down in early July when I was ready. A few days after the dream, her presence eventually drifted away, which is okay. She was there when I needed her. But every once in a while, she comes back. I have a hard time being proud of myself, but one time, when I had started my new job and was financially independent for the first time, I randomly started sobbing while out walking on my lunch break because I could feel how proud she was of me. I know I can't really offer any proof. I have some non-believers in my life who have been pretty dismissive of my experience, but I can only say my truth which is that she visited me and told me that she had passed and then hung out with me for a few days. I miss her like crazy, but I'm really grateful to be able to share all this with you. It's not something I talk about often because not everyone would understand. Dreams are one of the most common ways in which spirits can communicate with us, as I mentioned in Season 1, Episode 3. In traditional Chinese medicine, it's believed that when you dream vividly, you're actually not getting the deepest sleep you can. So my theory is that because you are in this limbo state of consciousness between wide awake and fast asleep, your mind is perfectly prepped for receiving messages from spirits in your dreams. I think it's incredibly sweet that Katie let Marie know about her passing in this way, just like how a gothic soulmate should. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard and would like to support this independently run show, consider becoming a member of my Patreon. Visit patreon.com slash stories with Sapphire to see the different tiers and perks like live watch parties or private tarot readings. What strange things have happened to you at night? Email me at storieswithsapphire at gmail.com. Salamat and good night. Stories with Sapphire is created and produced by me, Sapphire Sandalo. Out of Body, Out of Mind was submitted by Mike Nevada. My Gothic Soulmate was submitted by Marie Conway. Special thanks to my guest, Corey Choi. Music written by Sapphire Sandalo. For more information on this episode and my guest, visit storieswithsapphire.com. <laughs>